Hey guys, tonight we're taking a look at the Bearcat plate carrier from Direct Action Gear. I think it's a Polish company, but they do have a U.S. presence. They've got a U.S.-based website, so I don't think you have to deal with uh, import fees or clicking a uh, little American flag button on the website. You can go straight to the U.S. front-facing one. Uh, this plate carrier is one of the stranger designs that I've seen for not having a ton of obvious features built into it. It just has some unique construction to it. Obviously, I don't have the, the cummerbund uh, that's that's an aftermarket option with it. However, you don't, you're do not you not stuck using their cummerbund either. Uh, you've got some other options out there on the market. It's $140 without the cummerbund. So I think it's pretty affordably priced. You can find cummerbunds uh, fairly cheap. And I think a, a good functional plate carrier for sub $200 is okay. Uh, it's not US made, uh, so keep that in mind. And it does have some oddities. I struggled a little bit with the sizing, uh, but you can see plates are, are almost where they need to be. I think if I hold that down a little bit, uh, they're, they're pretty close. My, my sternal notch is right there. So uh, I'll show you what I mean when I said that I had to fight it a little bit to, to get the, the plates where I wanted them. Uh, but let's get this thing on the table and take a look at it because it is a really cool plate carrier from a design perspective and a construction perspective. If not, uh, functionality or feature load. All right, so looking at this direct action gear, Bearcat plate carrier, I want to show you guys plate fitment before we get too far into this, and then I'll, I'll get the plates out so that I can get you a better view of kind of everything as we move forward. So it is a, a medium, however, I would not call it optimally sized for medium e-sappies and backers all right first of all you, it it doesn't have any real structure to it uh, so i've hit on this in a couple other plate carriers in the past but you do need to be a little bit more deliberate when installing your plates to get everything kind of situated now is it is it going to affect anything too much if the plate bag is is twisted around the plate a little bit no, uh, but it might make some some fitment and some placement a little bit annoying. Uh, some some straps and, and routing options may be tighter on one side than the other if you don't have your plates centered in there. Additionally, uh, there is a, a decent amount of plate exposed on the bottom corners. I don't think that this was designed to be flush with this seam uh, with the plate installed by any stretch. Uh, I do think you could put smalls in here without too much issue, and I'll, I'll try that out for you guys in a minute. Uh, but you can see kind of the, the overhang on this plate pocket and the way the Velcro engages. The Velcro is fully engaged, so I'm not worried about dumping these plates by any stretch. However, there is, you know, about a square inch of, of face of plate or backer showing on each corner, front and back. So you've got kind of the whole corner of the plate uh, exposed, which is not ideal. Is it gonna cause any damage to the plates? Probably not. I'm not overly worried about them being exposed to the elements, especially not that much of it. Uh, but it is, uh, it, it doesn't quite look finished the way that that is situated. All right, uh, and that's the same front, front and rear plate bag potentially a little bit more exaggerated in the front bag. I didn't spend a ton of time trying to get these lined up in here, but I did want to show you that. Let's get some small plates in here and see how they look. Okay, so this is almost silly. Uh, it, it looks, it's probably showing up looking, looking just as bad to you guys with small plates in there, but I really feel like these plate bags were almost built for small plates with medium plates being an afterthought. So you, you do have the width for medium plates. Uh, so you've got more side to side play with the small plates in there. Uh, but this is like right at the corner of the plate. And, and it does more or less uh, seal that plate pocket. You can see the, the bottom is really almost taken care all the way out to the corner of the plate. Whereas on the medium plates, uh, it doesn't it doesn't even come close. Uh, so it will fit 
mediums or smalls with, with a little bit of a trade-off one way or the other. The medium fills it up side to side better, leaves a little bit more plate exposed on the bottom. The sides height-wise are fairly ideal. Uh, if I really torqued this down, I could get it a little bit cleaner, but it's it's kind of notched out anyways, so it's never going to totally cover that corner, uh, but you do have more side-to-side -side slop. Uh, so with that, I'm going to get the plates completely out of the way, and we'll run through the features and construction on here, because I do think it is a really interesting plate carrier. All right, try to get you guys a little bit closer so you can see things just a little bit better. All right, so the, the plate bags are primarily built out of a tweave like material that's it's essentially like turning plate socks into the entire carrier all right so the inside face this is all tweave uh, you've got some very uh low bulk loop velcro in here uh for for pontoons or or whatever uh direct action gear cells that that fills that kind of pontoon like role uh, and then the front face, uh, the the excess material outside of the, the plate sock is just there to add functionality. So you've got your Velcro, obviously for cummerbund and placard mounting. You've got a laminate material up top that is laser cut to provide a bib of sorts. Uh, these reliefs look like they're not going to attach pouches well. However, you do have uh, the vertical stitch line there. So everywhere that you need to weave... It is tacked down uh, and then when you weave back through the pouch so that piece isn't going to matter too much uh, kind of interesting you have side release buckles uh, for placard mounting and those are not sewn to the plate bag they're sewn to this kind of laser cut overlay so they're actually hanging off of this stitch uh, and you don't you're not putting any any pressure on the tweave uh, when you have a placard mounted, which I think is kind of interesting. And then that all ties into the top corners of the plate bag here. So your shoulder straps are also pulling on that face, uh, eliminating some of the tension on the tweed. Uh, additionally, you've got a couple of elastic loops uh, on the sides of the plate bag. Uh, for a $140 carrier, I kind of love that that feature stayed. Uh, because that's that's a huge win in my opinion for com routing. Uh, if you're you're hanging radios off the side of this or anything like that, All right? Uh, so that's kind of the the front plate bag in a nutshell. Uh, I don't know, you know, I I don't know where you would want to route things necessarily because it's all personal preference. Uh, but there is routing options coming out through here, uh, so you've got kind of plenty of space to to do some cable management in there. And if you're not uh, not mounting a lot of things on the bib, you know you you can use that kind of void uh, to wad up whatever cables are necessary. So if you've got an end user device or something like that, you have kind of that that void behind it to to clean up some cables. Uh, we'll get to the rear plate bag in a little bit. Uh, looking at the, the shoulder straps, this is why I was kind of struggling. So the the shoulder straps. Are, are sewn to the front plate bag uh, and they the tension comes out, or I'm sorry, the, the, the overlap goes through this buckle and then back under the shoulder strap. So it cleans up nicely. Uh, you don't have any exposed Velcro one way or the other, uh, but you can't, you really can't size it yourself while you're wearing it because it's all going to be on the inside face where the adjustments are. So you kind of got to, you know, try it on, see see how much adjustment you need, take it off, take the slack out, come back, try it again. Uh, and then the other piece that is a little annoying is you have kind of this, this doubled up edge here that looks like you could use it for routing, like it's, it's open on one end, uh, but it's not, it's kind of like tucked right up to the plate bag on the other side. So if you're doing an antenna relocation cable or something, it's gonna be really snug even on that, which is about the most minimalist thing that I can think of trying to run through there, short of uh, like a cattails antenna coming right off your radio. Uh, but that little bit of, of extra material there binds up when you're routing it through this buckle. Uh, so to get it where I needed it to be, I had to, I had to kind of fold that over 
run it through that buckle and then take up kind of more slack than it really wanted me to. So you can see there's some hook exposed behind there. It's not gonna snag on anything except for these pontoons when you stack the bags, uh, like you might have seen a couple of times in the video so far. It's just kind of a, a weird way to do it. And I think the straps are also needlessly long. Uh, this, this chunk of hook here has a lot of strap that it can engage with uh, as it's running through there. Uh, so I don't think they needed to be as long. Like you, you can afford to pay out more slack on here than you can to take up slack. Uh, I also, I'm assuming uh, that direct action gear has pads that engage with loop because there's loop on the inside face of that, that running tail there to kind of keep the, the continuous loop uh, on the underside of the shoulder strap. I don't have those pads, uh, and I've been wrong in the past looking at direct action gear about just all of the different things they have that can play with these things. Uh, this seems a little bit more streamlined than the Spitfire, but the Spitfire had a lot of features that I wasn't necessarily aware of when I looked at it. Uh, additionally, on the top of the shoulder strap, you have uh, some elastic webbing here for comm routing. Kind of drives home that this, this strip that gets in the way wasn't really needed. Um, I'm sure somebody somebody will will say no 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 I really want that that feature which is fine that's you know everybody's welcome to their opinion I don't think it's necessary since you already have this routing here right uh, kind of already talked about the inside of the plate bag with the the loop there but I do want to show you again how this closes up uh, you've got kind of this long tail of loop coming off uh, around the front side of the plate carrier and then it engages with a pretty hearty chunk of hook uh, sewn inside of the plate bag. Uh, it is gonna be dangler friendly. I think it fits uh, the industry standard as far as I'm aware of. So you've got hook facing away from the body, loop facing towards the body, uh, and it's gonna be internal to the plate, which is kind of where you want the dangler so that that void uh, between the dangler and your body doesn't is, is, is not as pronounced. All right, looking at the rear plate bag, uh, closure is exactly the same. Uh, internal face is the same. Uh, you do have uh, a void coming out of the, the, the shoulder area, uh, so you can route things through there. Unfortunate that the shoulder straps don't take advantage of that because then you could have had a lot of adjustment uh, without really eating up any usable space. Uh, looking at the external face of this thing, though, this is where things kind of really get weird, in my opinion. So you've got this kind of reinforced laminate top with a, really a carry handle. I would not use this as a drag handle. Uh, in a pinch, would the vest survive? Probably. Is it something that I want to do? No. Uh, but then you have this very minimalist uh, Molly or Pals footprint up top, which is enough there uh, to start weaving uh, a pouch, right? So you've got essentially three, two, two rows, uh, which gives you enough to, you know, enter the host platform, come back out through the pouch uh, and route through the platform again. Uh, so if you had a, a hydration uh, pocket or something like that, it's gonna be anchored up top and kind of free floating on the bottom. Now hidden behind this kind of goofy flap here is a zipper. Uh, and they do have a skeletonized back panel that goes with this, uh, which has a very, very unique shape to it. Uh, so the zippers engage all the way up, but then you, you kind of don't start the molly until you are down below what was already present on the host platform. Uh, so this would allow you to mount any full length pouch that you wanted and have continuous engagement uh, throughout the mounting, right? The bottom is uh, tied into the Velcro here, so when you have a plate in here, uh, it kind of ends up tucking into the plate pocket and having this securing flap uh, on top of the loop of the back panel. So it's pretty solid for not, not weighing essentially anything. Uh, this is a, a JPC pattern zipper, if I remember correctly, uh, which I, I, I'm almost positive I mounted other uh, JPC or SPC or ABS back panels on here before, and they fit just fine. 
uh, I believe Direct Action Gear also states on their website that it's cry pattern. So you you don't have to get this this back panel. Uh, if you do, I think it's like 15 bucks. It, it was it was pretty cheap last time I looked. I forgot to verify the price. Uh, so there's really no reason not to, uh, unless you've got a full suite of cry uh, compatible back panels that you you know you're going to use on here. All right. Uh, so that's that's the back panel. It's just to to show you the the footprint a little bit more cleanly, uh, without kind of the vest in the background of scaring things. I've had this thing wadded up, so it's kind of got a life of its own, but. There's your kind of relief uh, for where the host platform uh, PALS already exists. Very unique design, super duper lightweight. Uh, the whole thing is crazy lightweight. Uh, like I think, I'm gonna, gonna eyeball this. PMAG, PMAG feels heavier uh, than this whole thing. All right, super subjective, not at all scientific, but that's the way it feels. All right, so that's your, your direct action gear, Bearcat plate carrier, pretty cool, 140 bucks. Uh, the cummerbund on their website, 50 bucks. Oh, I'm sorry, cummerbund mounting is just through the uh, the relief in the zipper here, uh, which is not. It's it's more space than is really usable because you have this limited amount of Velcro on the bottom. Uh, so I think in the past I've I've shown this in video with the uh, Agilite Warfighter cummerbund. And it would fit through, uh, but it wouldn't fully engage the Velcro. There was a little bit more cummerbund sticking up, which could potentially cause wear on this tweeve faster than you wanted. Uh, so really like a, a three inch cummerbund uh, coming into here is gonna be ideal. If you've got a, a Velcro flapped two band cummerbund, so like the Ferro cummerbund would work out pretty well on here. Um, that's, that's how that works, all right? It's really, it's pretty drama free as long as you can fit through this gap, which the Warfighter cummerbund could fit through. I think it's about a four inch pass through in there. So any two band cummerbund should play really well with this thing. Thanks guys, appreciate it.